Hey guys, Mr. Riz uh, here. If you are watching this video, this video is to help you out on the 3.6 worksheet. Um, so this packet here, um, I will go through graded as like kind of completion for one part, and then I will roll a die and randomly pick one of the problems to grade as like a homework quiz as uh, for correctness. So make sure that all parts are filled out with every problem that we complete. Um, so I'm going to go through here and I'm not going to do every problem, but I'm going to find the first derivative and the second derivative of all the problems for you guys, just to help you out with that practice there. And then I'll probably give you some hints about, you know, what you need to worry about when it comes for extrema or anything like that. So um, in this video, you really won't find any um, thing with like X and Y intercepts. Those should be pretty straightforward. Um, and limits towards infinity. I don't think we'll touch about that, but anything else, you know, min to max, um, we might touch upon. So we're going to start with each one here, and I'm going to just on top of the screen here, put the first derivative and then the second derivative. Okay, so the first problem here, we have x squared or x cubed over x squared minus nine. Another thing too, just to um, make sure you guys are aware of, these problems are going to be way tougher than what's going to be on your test, but, you know, we'll practice harder than what we uh, play. All right, so first derivative here. All right, we got to do low d high, high d low. So low is x squared minus nine, d high is three x squared. Minus high is x cubed, d low is two x. And then all over low low, which is x squared minus nine squared. All right, let's distribute the top here. So if we distribute this, we'd get a 3x to the fourth minus 27x squared. And then we'd get a minus 2x to the fourth over x squared minus 9 squared. All right, so the first derivative, I'm going to write it over here because I think we won't need to simplify this at all. And I'll just move this out of the way. First derivative is, okay, 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is just x to the fourth minus 27x squared over x squared minus 9 squared. Okay, so we got the first derivative. Critical numbers on the first derivative, since we have a fraction, it's where the top could equal zero. Now, the top, what you're going to have to do is to factor out the x squared so that, okay, there's x squared equals zero, that's one of them. And then what's left over will be like an x squared minus 27. You will get two answers there. They're not gonna be great answers. One of them, they're both gonna be like the square root of 27 broken down plus or minus. Uh, but you know, we'll get two answers there. So you got zero and then those three. And then other critical numbers is where the denominator could equal zero. Well, the de denominator could equal zero if x equals three or positive three. So there's going to be like five critical numbers on the first derivative. So you're going to have a lot of intervals here that you'll have to make sure that you are aware of. All right, second derivative. So what I'm going to do is I need to leave the first derivative up there. I'm just going to go ahead and move this out of the way. We'll do the second derivative. Now, the second derivative, we have to do the quotient rule with the chain rule. So we got low, which is x squared minus nine squared, and then d high, which would be four x cubed minus 54 x. All right, then minus high, x to the fourth minus 27 x squared, d low. All right, we got to do the chain rule. So we got two of the x squared minus nine to the first power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And all over low, low, which becomes x squared minus 9 to the fourth power. Okay, I'm going to do this here just because it's kind of complicated, but we're going to factor out on the top here this x squared minus 9. And actually, let's think about this. If we factor it out, it's going to cancel out one of them from the bottom. So we can cancel that guy out, he goes away. This guy drops down to the first power and we would divide this guy out and he would go down to three. So we have an X squared minus nine cubed on the bottom. All right, now let's look at the top. The top we have to foil this out. So if we foil the X squared minus nine to this term here, we would get a four X to the fifth 
minus 54x cubed, all right, and then we got to distribute the 9, minus 36x cubed, and then minus 9 times negative Thank you, Scott. We are going to hold attendance again this morning. Uh, we do have some traffic issues again this morning and busting, so please hold attendance until further notice. All right, that's 486x. All right, and then over here on this side, we have to distribute. Well, we can actually kind of combine this 2 and the 2x. I'm going to do that right now and make this a 4x. And we have to distribute the 4x and then also the negative sign here. So the 4x times the x to the fourth would be 4, but the negative would be minus 4x to the fifth. And then let's see, we'd have the negative times the negative 27, that's positive, times the 4x. So 27 times 4, what's that? 108. 108x cubed. Okay, so oh, this is all second derivative. Let's clean up this. Okay, the x and the fifths cancel each other out. That's nice. All right, what about these x cubes? We got negative 54, and we got negative 36 and a positive 108. That breaks down to 18x cubed, and then plus 486x x squared minus 9 cubed. Okay, so here's the second derivative. Uh, what you want to do when you're trying to find critical points on the second derivative, just like the top, figure out figure out where the top equals zero. So you're going to factor out, I believe 486 probably divides by 18. It does. So you can factor out an 18x from the top and you'll get like an x squared plus. Again, percent. teachers, please hold attendance. Do not submit attendance. We do have students arriving now. We'll get back on let you know when. Do they think like we would forget in the last, what, 27 seconds? Okay, anyways. Uh, so you'd get an x squared, or we factor out an 18x, so you get x equals zero is a critical number. Uh, and then whatever, x squared plus 27 is a critical number. All right, and then you also have the bottom here. When does the bottom equal zero? Uh, and that would be when x is plus or minus three, right? Now keep in mind, those are gonna be discontinuous points. Those are vertical asymptotes there. All right, so there's the first derivative and second derivative and some clues. Let's keep this going to the next problem. All right, we got x squared plus one over x squared minus four. So we'll start with the first derivative and I'll go through that just to kind of break that down for you guys. And then you guys have to go through and uh, do the rest. So we got low d high, x squared minus four, low d high is two x minus high, x squared plus one over d low, two x, all over low low, x squared minus four. All right, so first derivative, let's distribute that out. We got a two x cubed minus eight x, and then distribute the negative and the two x would be minus two x cubed minus two x. Oh, I forgot that squared. And we got x squared minus four squared. So the first derivative is, okay, the two x cubes go away. We got a negative eight x and a negative two x. That's a negative 10 x over x squared minus four squared. Okay, so critical numbers on the first derivative is where the top can equal zero. So the top can equal zero here, and x equals zero. That's kind of easy to figure out. And also critical numbers or critical points were where the bottom would be discontinuous. And if we set that equal to zero, we'll probably get plus or minus two, right? Hopefully you can look at that and figure that out and see, okay, yeah, plus or minus two. So get those three critical points and you'll have your four intervals you'll have to figure out, you know, whether the graph is going up or down on the first derivative test. All right, now, so let's take that first derivative. We'll take the derivative of that and we will get the second derivative. So second derivative, we got low, which is x squared minus four squared, and then we got d high is negative 10. Then minus high is negative 10 x, and then d low, we gotta do the chain rule. So we got two of the x squared minus four to the first power, times the derivative of the inside is 2x. 
and then all over low low x squared minus four to the fourth. Okay, so kind of like the last problem we just did is we can factor out this x squared minus four from these two terms and cancel out one from the bottom. So that's gonna go down to the three. This one's gonna keep completely go away and this one's gonna drop down to the first power. All right, so let's see. This, if we distribute the negative 10, we get negative 10 x squared plus 40. And then over here, we need to multiply the negative times the negative 10 X. Okay, that's positive 10 X times it by two and then by two X. And so let's see, that'd be 20 X 40 X squared, right? All over low, low, which is X squared minus four cubed. So the second derivative you should get, uh, add them together, that's 30 X squared plus 40 all over x squared minus four cubed. All right, so second uh, derivative critical numbers would be when the top would equal zero. So you gotta go through, uh, there's nothing to factor out here. You're just gonna minus the 40 over, divide by 30, and then take the square root. And take the square root of a negative number. And then uh, figure out when the bottom equals zero. So the bottom, uh, just similar to this one here, would be when the bottom is discontinuous. Uh, so you could talk about just like before there are some vertical asymptotes here um, and that could change the concavity between those all right so there's the first and second derivatives hopefully you're okay and that one does have a limit as it goes towards infinity as well should be okay on those ones okay next problem here now before we begin i'm going to change this to x times nine minus x squared to the one half power All right, so first derivative, let's get this started. Got to do the product rule. So the derivative of the x is 1. We'll leave the 9 minus x squared to the 1 half power alone. And then we'll add, we'll leave the x alone. We got to do the chain rule. So we get 1 half of the 9 minus x squared to the negative half power times by the derivative of the inside is negative 2x. Lovely. So let's factor this out here. We always factor out the lowest term. When there's not a denominator, so we don't need to worry about canceling things out, but let's factor out the nine minus X squared to the negative half power. If we take away a negative half power from the positive half power, that actually bumps it up to a positive one degree. So that's just nine minus X squared. Then over here, we are left with the X times the half times the negative two X. All right, so that'd be a half of X times the negative two X, that'd be a negative X squared. So the first derivative, there's actually two different ways to write the first derivative, would be nine minus X squared to the negative half power times nine minus two X squared. Or you could write it as nine minus two x squared on the top over radical nine minus x squared. All right, the reason why both of these are nice, this one over here is easier to do the derivative of, this one down here is to figure out easier to find critical numbers of. So the critical number one would the top equal zero. Well, okay, let's see, you'd minus the nine over, you would divide by two and then take the square root of that. So that one actually works out, you get plus or minus, and then it ends up being some, um, irrational number, but you got two of them there. You also want to figure out when the bottom equals zero. Well, the bottom would equal zero. Uh, let's see when we would minus the nine over divide. So you get plus or minus three. One thing you want to double check though, is there is going to be a limitation here because we have a square root, a square root can never be negative. So we're going to have discontinuous points when X is bigger than three, right? Because if this was 10, 9 minus 100 would be negative something. So yeah, anything, any number bigger than 3 would make this not exist. Also, any number less than negative 3, because negative 4 squared would be 16 and that one more. So we're going to have some discontinuous points here. And you'll probably see on the graph that this will only work in a small range in between negative, negative 3 and positive 3. If you get any uh, critical numbers outside of that range, technically they don't exist too. So uh, that's just something to think about. And once again, these problems are tougher than the ones that will be on your test, but 
you know, we practice tough, so everything is easier on the test. All right, let's take the second derivative. Now I'm gonna take the derivative. This one here, it's a little easier. I'm gonna switch around and do this part first here because the product rule doesn't matter which one we do first. So I'm gonna take the derivative of nine minus two X squared, which becomes just negative four X. Yep, just negative four X. And we'll leave the nine minus X squared to the negative half power alone. All right, then we'll leave the nine minus two X squared alone. We'll take the derivative of that part, which we gotta do the chain rule. So we got a negative a half times nine minus X squared to the negative three halves power times the derivative of the inside is negative two X. Ugh. All right, so let's factor out the lowest term. The lowest term here is the nine minus X squared to the negative three halves power. So we're gonna take away a negative three halves power. If you take away a negative three halves or add three halves power to each term, that goes to the first power. So we got four X times nine minus X squared to the first power. So we can distribute there. And then over here, we're gonna get this away. Um, since we're gonna do some distributing. I'm just gonna change this to nine minus two X squared times, uh, let's see, that'd be a negative a half times a negative two, oh, just times X. Okay, so let's see, what do we get? I'm gonna move this already down to the bottom, the nine minus X squared to the negative three halves power. It's just gonna be on the bottom, but it's gonna be a positive three halves power. And then on the top here, let's distribute the negative four X and we would get a negative uh, 36 X plus four X cubed. And then over here, if we distribute the X, we get plus nine X minus two X cubed. All right, so the second derivative, not the prettiest looking thing, but we would get how many X cubes we got? We got four and negative two, so that'd be a positive two X cubed. And then X is, we got negative 36 and nine, so that'd be minus 27 X. Okay, so that problem there to figure out when the top would equal zero, you're gonna factor out a two X, so you get one, 2x equals zero, that's an easy problem to solve. And then the other one would be like x squared. Um, actually, you want to factor out a 2x, but you'd get like a 2x squared minus 27. You'd have to take 27, move it over, divide by two, and then take the square root of it. You should get plus or minus numbers. Now, if those two numbers are bigger than um, three and negative three, um, they just won't exist but you know I, i'm not really quite sure what those are just looking at them i'd have to check it on the calculator to see you also have discontinuous points here um at plus or minus three right and then same thing before you know they'd be numbers outside the range okay so there's the first and second derivatives that should help you out let's move on to the fourth problem here oh yay now let's talk about how we can take that problem kind of do like what we just did to make our life easier so we could change this to negative 2x times x squared plus 7 to the negative half power. I would rather do the problem. Mr. Teacher, this is okay. I take attendance. Apologize for the uh, last couple of days. Uh, we're kind of working on some logistics district-wide to see if we can uh, get our window a little bit better of uh, get here and not cram all one time with our buses. So apologize for the inconvenience, but hang in there and we'll, we'll keep working on it. Thanks. All right. So here we go. Um, let's go through. I'm going to, it's rather, I'd rather do the product rule than the quotient rule. So um, we'll take the derivative of negative 2x, which is negative 2. We'll leave the x squared plus 7 to the negative half power alone. All right, plus now we'll leave the negative 2x alone. Take the derivative of that part, which we have to do the product rule or chain rule. So we got the negative half times x squared plus 7 the negative three halves power times the derivative of the inside, which would be two X. All right, so let's factor out the lowest term, just like what we did in the last problem here. We're gonna factor out the X squared plus seven to the negative three halves power. So we get a negative two, this would bump up to the first degree, just like in the last problem. And then let's see here, this would go away. So we'd have a negative two X, times a half, okay, so that's x, times 2x, so that'd be plus 2x. 
or 2x squared, right? 2x squared? X, yeah, 2x squared. All right, so the first derivative. A couple different ways we can write the first derivative. We could write it as, you know what, I'll put this part first because that's typically, actually, let's, let's keep this going. We got x squared plus 7 to the negative 3 halves power. Let's see, this would distribute to negative 2x squared minus 14 plus 2x squared. So two different ways we could write this. This would be, since these would cancel out, we could say that this is a negative 14 times the x squared plus 7 to the negative 3 halves power. Or we could write this as negative 14 over x squared plus 7 to the 3 halves power. Okay, so when we have a problem like this, we want to figure out, okay, where does the top equal zero? On the first derivative, the top would never equal zero. So there's no critical points on the top, meaning there's no mins or maxes. On the bottom though, okay, we want to figure out where does the bottom equal zero? Um, no, never would happen either, right? Because if we try to move the seven over and take the square root of negative seven, that doesn't exist. So there is no critical numbers of the first derivative, meaning this graph is going in the same direction, either going all up or going all down. So just pick any number for the first derivative, plug it in to figure out whether that number is positive or negative, meaning the graph then is going up or it's going down. Okay, let's take the derivative of that and go through now. We can do either one. We can do the product rule or we can use the chain rule. Actually, if we do this, we can do the chain rule because this is negative 14 times something. Let's do that. It's a little bit more complicated. If you want to do low D high, high D low, that's fine. But this will probably be fine. Okay, so if we take the derivative of this negative 14 times negative three halves, calculator time, what's that? Negative 14 times negative 1.5 is 21. So we got 21 of the inside to the negative 5 halves power. We just drop that down. And then times by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the inside would be 2x. All right, so we can multiply the 21 times the 2x. And the second derivative becomes 42x times x squared plus 7 to the negative 5 halves power. So the second derivative, if we use the chain rule, this was a lot quicker to do than low D high, high D low on this part, is 42x over x squared plus 7 to the 5 halves power. Okay, so second derivative, where does the top equal 0? We actually do have a point where the top equals 0. Um, that's kind of easy to figure out. And then also we want to figure out where does the bottom equal 0? The bottom would never equal zero, just like before, that how this bottom would never equal zero. So we got one critical number on the second derivative. That should be our point of inflection. And um, we'll go through and find the rest. All right, let's get this going here. Two more problems to do. All right, next problem. Ooh, this one's pretty easy here. All right, first derivative. All right, we got negative. 2x to the fourth, so that'd be negative 8x cubed plus 6x. There we go. All right, so the critical numbers of this would be where this equals zero. So you guys have to factor out uh, the x, and then you actually break down. So there should be three critical numbers here, right? Uh, let's see if we factor out the x, and the other one here, we should be able to minus the 6 over, divide by 8. Yeah, that should work out. Now, it won't probably be nice critical numbers, like two and three, but you know, they're critical numbers there uh, on the chain. All right, then the second derivative, take the derivative of this, okay, negative eight times three would be negative 24x squared plus six. All right, try to figure out where this would equal zero. All right, and that one, you know, we minus the six over, divide by negative 24, and then take the square root. So you'll get critical numbers. They're not gonna be nice and pretty. Um, they will be on the test. But, you know, just going through the example here. So that one's fairly easy. Maybe that might be the one where I go through and check, you know, make sure you guys are going through these. You got everything going on. So fingers crossed, I roll five. That seems to be the easiest problem on here. All right. Next, we got the trig function here. Now, keep in mind the trig function, we're only looking at between zero and two pi. 
So you guys don't have to worry about the continuation of the graph or anything like that. So the first derivative here, the first derivative of negative x is negative 1. The derivative of 2 cosine is negative 2 sine of x. Okay, so keep in mind here, I'll give you guys the clues, I'll probably write this down. If you want to figure out first derivative, when does negative, two, negative 1 minus 2 sine of x equals 0? Add the 1 over, you get negative 2 sine of x equal to negative 1, or positive 1. Divide by negative 2, you get negative 1 half. And so x is going to be the sine inverse of negative 1 half. So the critical numbers of the first derivative is where uh, the sine or the y is equal to negative 1 half. So there should be two points in between 0 and 2 pi that equal um, negative 1 half. All right, next, the second derivative, critical points. Well, we just take the derivative of the derivative. Negative 1 goes away. Negative 2 sine goes to negative 2 cosine. So if we want to figure out those critical points, when does negative 2 cosine of x equal 0? If we divide by negative 2, we still just get when does cosine of x equal 0? And so we got to figure out cosine inverse of 0. So on a unit circle, when does the cosine equal zero? There should be two points there. So that's when the x equals zero and the two point. Um, you get that. So you got two points there. Um, should be all right. Okay, so um, there's the homework problems there. Um, your test is gonna be a lot easier than this and we'll go over and look at the test. Now the test is gonna be broken up into two parts. Um, so it's not, because it's like a super long test. I just want to make sure there's some problems that you guys can do without a graphing calculator. And then another part of the test where you can use the graphing calculator to help you out. So I'm just breaking the test up into like easy problems and tough problems. Um, um, and so that way, you know, you'll go through and be all right. Um, okay, guys, so there's the homework. Hopefully that helped you guys out with it. And you watch this video and you, you're going to feel all right with this section. Keep in mind, this is the tough section of all calculus. And after we finish this here, Everything, it's not going to be like super easy, but it's going to be way easier than this. Well, we're going to slowly load down. We're going to go into our cool down phase of calculus. I guess have a good one. I'll see you next time.